My name is Gavin May. We're at Woods Cycle Country in New Braunfels, Texas. And today we're gonna uncreate a DRZ 400 SM. Awesome, man. All right, so just jump right in. All right, first thing, pictures. Manufacturers gotta know that it comes in in good condition, not crushed during the shipping of the machine. So we take pictures of every unit. Just so if there is an issue, we have something to go off of and prove that we didn't do it ourselves. We only use them really if the the crate's damaged and there's damage to the machine. Usually it's only if there's a problem. Nice. Let's get dirty. People wonder what do you guys do with these uh, crates? We kind of just leave them out for whoever wants to come and take them. I mean, they're too thin to be made into anything. During the shipping process, most of them are damaged. Um, okay. So we just kind of leave them out for people that want to do projects or whatever, scrap them. This is just like hardware, fenders, just stuff that they couldn't attach to it for shipping because it would make it too big to fit in the crate. Body, so you always gotta wear gloves because you don't know where these things have been. There you go. They sit in yards for a long time. Sometimes you'll get a couple with raccoons or rats or <laughs> any sort of animal in there. Damn. What's the craziest thing that's come out of one of these? <laughs> Some raccoons. Oh yeah? yeah? Alive? Yeah. Wow. Took off. It varies just depending on what kind of motorcycle it is. It could take anywhere from an hour and a half to three or four hours depending on if it's like a big cruiser. Okay. It's gonna take longer, a lot of fairings. It should be about two hours on this unit. Okay. A lot of the time spent just unpackaging everything, taking all the materials off that come on the unit from the factory, a lot of rubber bands and bubble wrap. Yeah. So once I get these out like this, I like to make the packet, meaning the owner's manual and all the paperwork to go with it just to, so the warranty is intact. When we do packets, it's pretty universal for every unit. We'll just pack it for when it's bleeding. Then just throw in a lot of goodies to the customer. You know, bags for all the machines. And these colors for individual machines. And here. Bags already got that. And the stickers, of course. Everything's got to have a sticker. You want to plug your Instagram right now? I'm not really too uh, active on Instagram. Actually, if you want to go on Gavin underscore May, you can see me do a backflip on a skateboard. Done. That's going in. I feel like we're on Velocity for Discovery Channel. Do you have a call? Do you have a call? Do you have a call? I just like to throw the handlebars on. So we can put the front wheel on and get it on a motorcycle or dirt bike stand. Cause then you can set it up kind of to be even and comfortable for you. And then if the customer wants to adjust it, they can adjust it. What is like, uh, what's the most complicated motorcycle you've ever had to set up? Uh, the Vaquero Kawasaki Cruisers. Like it's a lot of work to just move everything around. Got to fork it up. Oh, wow. Oh wow, so you're gonna attach this from that point yep. to the chain right there. Yeah, just to throw the front wheel on, get it on the dirt bike. Let's throw up some more. 
could stand under it. But usually, all these motorcycles come with a coating on the brakes to protect them from corroding in the packaging. So if you buy a bike from a dealership, I recommend just spraying your rotors down with brake cleaner just to clean them off because they'll make your your bike not stop very well if you if the technician hasn't cleaned them off. You know? Is this just uh, like a lubricant or something? Yeah, it's just basic grease. Just throw it on just so it doesn't corrode. It keeps water out. Okay, it's a big moment. This is when it starts to look like a motorcycle. Exactly. Just the grease on the spacers just so they don't kind of drag into the wheel bearings and leave marks. I told him I was trying to stay off the ground today since they gave me this polo shirt. <laughs> and with the gold rims, you don't want to scratch those. No, these are super nice. That's the, the selling point on these now. They're, they've been the same bike for like 20 years. And you don't want to tighten this down until you take it off because there's a certain order you want to tighten these axles in or else it'll, it could throw the wheel off a little bit. What are you trying to accomplish here? Just checking to make sure the speedometer cable is tight and that everything looks to be plugged in. Because you're pretty much just going to bunch this thing up and put the light over, the light housing. And the hardware is pretty specific to where it goes, so if you get a bike from the dealership and something looks wrong, don't be afraid to take it back to the dealership and ask. Because a lot of dealerships, not just dealership, but some, you guys don't have a lot of experience putting things together. They just kind of throw them on it. What percentage are we at right now, you think? Say we're about 35%. Depending on if it's going to be on the, on the showroom floor or if it's going to be if it's going to the customer immediately after, I mean, it's just to be, if the customer just wants to look at it and sit on it, I'd say like probably like 40%, but if they want to go and ride it, then. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into setup. Yeah. How many bikes did you put together? Uh, a lot. In a day, if I'm just doing bike, it varies, but in a day I could usually do like five, four or five in a day. So this is repositioning the handlebars and the light. Yeah, um, the lights in place. Is, I wouldn't say it's installed quite yet, but I just like to kind of go with what I know. So if there's something, I mean, usually we consult the website with the buildup, but you just go with what you're familiar with, and then. Your process of elimination it'll just come together something makes your fingers slide come on What I'm probably gonna do is I'll just get the build up if we have one printed out and look here just to make sure that everything goes in the right place because there's so many different machines you just gotta make sure everything, all the bolts, especially like everything's pretty specific to where it goes. So you'll end up with one bolt and you'll be like, I don't know where this goes. Again. We are moving along. Yeah, I had the wrong hardware in the headlight cover as for the manual. So go back and kind of pull it all out. It's not the process I'm used to. Wow. So why do you think they started to come a bit more assembled? I don't know. I guess just for efficiency for the people building them. I mean, it would take me like, it took me like four hours the last couple bikes I've done just throwing them together because there's just a bunch of 
add up. Little, just the little things add up, you know. Okay, so where are we at right now? Just making sure everything's routed correctly, so nothing gets pinched. How are we gonna put the headlight shroud back on and call it a day? So now you're just adjusting for like the ergos? Yeah, just trying to make it feel nice and tight. We're just gonna go back and torque everything down. Cause if I don't do it all at once, I'll forget what I've done and it's always a mess. Cause if you go and you just tighten as you go along, nothing's gonna line up and then it's just a headache. And on most motorcycles, you wanna have a little gap in the back. You wanna tighten the front and then the back and there'll be a gap. And that's just common, it's just on all bikes. All right, now's the easy part. We're gonna throw just a little stuff, just plastics and reflectors and all that stuff that you don't need, but you have to have. We'll come back here in a little bit and readjust the mirrors and controls again just so everything's even and symmetrical for the customer. Nice. And I already checked the torque spec on the rear and torqued it earlier, but I haven't tightened the front yet, so I'll come back and do that here in a minute. And usually when we build these machines, we'll take the battery out and put it on a rack somewhere else just to not discharge the battery and have to buy another one later on. Okay, so real quick, you took the battery out there? Yep. Yeah. Took the battery out so I could throw it on a charger just so it's ready for when someone wants this thing. You can just toss it in and then it can go rip. So we're what, like 90 ish percent of the way through? Yeah, we're like 90%. So, and this is it. Yeah, this is it. Basically, it's what you pay for whenever somebody puts it together. But, uh, and I can attest that it is a pretty extensive process. Yeah. Like and we've been out here for a yeah. couple hours working on this. Yeah, so. and you could save money buying a used bike, but if you go through a dealership, they're going to do you right. And if anything happens, they're going to fix it no matter what the issue is. And that's the advantage of buying from a prospective dealership instead of just some guy off Craigslist, you know? Exactly. And Suzuki will warranty all the things on here if you have any issues at all. I mean, that's awesome, man. Yeah. So, Gavin at Blue yes, Cycle Country. Yep. Thank you, dude. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. No problem, man.